So I've made it pretty clear by now that I like my vegetables. But for me, it's not just having a plant-based diet, but having a plant-based lifestyle that is simple, sustainable, and choosing, whenever possible, products that are kind to the environment, cruelty-free, and if there's a chance that I can mix up myself, hell yeah, I would! So today I'm gonna teach you how to make your own enzyme cleaner. You can use it to clean your laundry, your floors, your toilets, your car, your dishes, your fruits and vegetables, anything that needs cleaning, it does a job, and it does a job well. You're going to need some fruit and all vegetables scraps. If you're starting out, I highly suggest citrus peels because this produces the best smelling enzymes. I made some juice yesterday with grapefruit, orange, lime, and I've also got here some lime leaves from making curry yesterday. You'll also need some fine brown sugar, a small funnel, clean water, and a clean plastic bottle. The ratio rule of making enzyme cleaner is one part sugar to three parts scraps to ten parts water. So let's get started. First of all, it'll be easier for you to mark the ratios on the bottle itself. So you kind of estimate what 14 parts are and then I put a mark on where I should end my sugar, my scraps and my water. So with the funnel, I'm going to put the sugar in. What's very important is to make sure that your whole environment is really clean from your utensil, the funnel, the bottle, even your hands need to be extra clean. The last thing you want is to contaminate your enzyme cleaner and I'll show what it looks like later. Once you meet the sugar level, then you put in your fruit peels. Whenever you can, try and use organic leftovers because non-organic fruits and vegetables would be sprayed with things like pesticides and fungicides and these toxins would then be transferred into your cleaner. And now it's time to pour in the water. And then you need to give it a good shake to let the sugar dissolve. Ooh, it's like a fruit lava lamp. Last step is to wait. So for the next one to two weeks, leave the cap open just a little bit because this is going to ferment and release some gases. You should let this ferment for at least three months before using it. And like wine, the longer you keep it, the better it gets. So one thing I always forget to do, which you should not forget to do, is to write the date that you make this so you know when you can use it. So I'm gonna show you a bit of my collection, which unfortunately I haven't marked with dates. Here's one I made, I think, about two months ago. It has pandan leaves and citrus peel. One sign of an effective fermentation is a white film on top of your cleaner, which you can apparently take and put on your face like some super cream. I haven't gotten the guts to try it yet, but once I do, I'll let you know. And this is what happens when it's not white. It turns black instead, with a bit of green, if you're lucky, due to contamination. Now, if this happens to you, Try adding in a bit more brown sugar and let it ferment for another one to three months. If there's still no change, it's as good as gone. Sorry. Sorry. And this is the finest from my collection. This is at least a year and three months old, I think. This smells really good as far as fermented things go. And that is how you make your own enzyme cleaner. Super simple to make, 100% natural, no toxins, and it does a fantastic job of cleaning everything under the sun. I'm still new to this whole enzyme making thing, so feel free to share your experiences with me, and we can make better enzymes together. So thanks so much for watching, and here's to a clean 